the latest uh, issue about G20 is the invitation card which says Bharat and not India. Now that is the latest thing that is G20 going to reposition India as Bharat and not India as India? No, India that is Bharat. It is there in the constitution. Hmm. Please, I would invite everybody to read it. So it's not, it's not something which is new, it is something which existed in the constitution and so you didn't do, it's not a new roll of dice. No, I, look, I, I think uh, when you say uh, Bharat, in a sense, uh, a meaning and a understanding and a connotation uh, that comes with it and that is reflected in our constitution as well. Uh, I'll begin with asking you about, you know, the G20 being having this 20 largest economies. And uh, so will the New Delhi meeting reposition finance infrastructure uh, frameworks to stimulate global growth or like in the past, is it going to be for the growth of just a few? Well, uh, first of all, Smita, good to talk to you. And uh, as you can see, this is like the home stretch. Uh, you know, everything is getting ready. The negotiators are negotiating. The people who are trying to get the arrangements done are working at it. So, so it's really at this moment uh, uh, very, very focused time for us. Uh, but still, I, I think it's important uh, people have a sense of what is going on. Uh, and uh, uh, my uh, reading right now of the G20 is that uh, there are a whole lot of issues. Some are longer term structural, meaning that uh, they've been discussed before, including at earlier G20s. Some are more emergent. They, they are issues of the last year, maybe the last two, three years, uh, which have again come to head, whose, whose uh, uh, stress impact uh, on countries uh, is, is very high. So you're going to get really a mix of issues uh, that the world is looking at. Uh, and a lot of this, uh, the burden is on the global south, uh, on developing countries. Uh, so uh, one very important message for us is focus on the global south. But uh, there is a larger context. The context is of a very turbulent global environment. You know, the impact of the COVID, uh, impact of the Ukraine conflict, mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues like debt, which have carried on for some time. Uh, and, and by the way, you know, climate disruptions, which are today affecting the economy as well. Uh, I'll come to Global South because you spoke about that post BRICS also. Sure. Uh, I'll come on that. But uh, first, I'd like to ask what whether uh, you know the the fact that President Putin and President Xi are not going to be uh, present at the New Delhi meet uh, is that has that cast a shadow on the uh, summit? Not really. I mean, look. Uh, I think uh, at different points of time in G20, you know, there have been some presidents or prime ministers who, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. have chosen not to come themselves. Uh, but you know, that country and that country's position. Uh, is obviously reflected by whoever is the uh, representative uh, on on uh, that occasion. Uh, so you you had you know some occasions where you have had uh, you know a president or two, sometimes three, uh, who who have not uh, uh, themselves come. But I I do think you know my my sense from talking to the ministers certainly, and I know the Sherpas are in touch with each other. They are right now uh, trying to hammer out the final uh, document. I think everybody is coming with a great deal of seriousness. I mean, they, Will it have they, an impact on the outcome uh, of the meet? I would put it this way, that uh, the, if, uh, you know, uh, the issues are there. Uh, these are not issues that are this morning being taken up. I mean, there's a whole gestation period of eight, nine months where at different levels, mm -hmm. ministers or officials have tried to progress an issue. So this is like a culmination. Mm -hmm. You know, these are uh, these are really about uh, 16, 18 processes, which are all coming together to be stitched up together to to produce a summit. Uh, so outside. Russia and China are not really miffed with India, and is that the reason? No, no, no. no. I, 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 don't. I don't think it has anything to do with India. I mean, I, I think whatever decision they make, I mean, they would know best. But uh, uh, I, I would not at all see it the way 
uh, you would suggest and it's not going to have an impact on the de the declaration itself is a is a complicated procedure to arrive at a consensus to have a declaration so uh, are we moving towards it are the countries moving towards that and well we are negotiating right now as as i said the negotiation uh, is not uh, uh, the clock did not start ticking yesterday the clock has been ticking for some time mm -hmm. so typically what happens is there's a ministerial meeting then a ministerial meeting produces outcomes i'll, I'll give you an example okay uh, i chaired the development ministers meeting okay so when I, we did the development ministers meeting uh, there was uh, and agreed all 20 countries agreed that there should be an action plan to speed up the sustainable development goals achievement uh, they all 20 countries agreed that we should have high principles for uh, environmentally friendly lifestyle hmm? so now if these have been already approved uh, either they get attached or some part of it in some summary form comes into the document so everyone you know the labor the the education, the fi the finance is a very very important track. I mean, Correct. That's a very crucial track because, in a way, that's where the whole thing began. The G20 exercise began. So every track uh, feeds in outcomes. These are uh, some of them have multiple meetings, like finance. Some of them have a uh, single meeting. So these outcomes are melded together, uh, and they produce a composite document. In addition, there are things which may be uh, discussed among the Sherpas or the leaders may also discuss some things among themselves. These meetings have been going on since the beginning of this year, right. but uh, is there a consensus building and what will India see as, as the host, what will India see as a win-win situation? Well, I, I do not think it is just a matter of India seeing something. Uh, today, uh, the, the expectations of the world mm -hmm. uh, uh, are are uh, very uh, high in terms of uh, what the G20 uh, is able to produce and produce in terms of meeting the challenges of the world. So, if you were to go to Africa, we go to Latin America, go to parts of Asia, go to the Caribbean, go to the Pacific, everybody is today saying, okay, I have a certain set of issues. You know, I have a debt problem, I have a trade problem, I have a health access problem. I have a green uh, development resourcing problem. So, what will the G20 do for me? So, the world is waiting. So, the world is waiting uh, or today I see it more uh, for India as a responsibility that we have the responsibility today in a very difficult world. You know, it is difficult in terms of the COVID impact, difficult in terms of the conflict impact, in terms of the climate impact, in terms of debt. That is one part of it but it is also difficult politically. There is a very sharp north-south divide. There is an even sharper east-west polarization. So, how do you bring people together? How do you find common ground? How do you, how do you make everybody understand that we all have a bigger responsibility? Mm. And, and therefore, please, you know, can we, can we kind of get our act together here? and, and uh, do what is right by the world. As a former diplomat and now as an external affairs minister, I guess that is right up your alley to find common ground. Well, I, you know, I, everybody has wor worked and is working on it. You know, uh, there is a, you know, every minister, we, we have uh, about 15 ministerial tracks. Every minister has put in the best. The Sherpa and his team have worked and are working very hard. So, it is a, it's a, it's a collective Gina. effort. Sure. Right. You you've just come back from BRICS. Yeah. You are heading uh, for the ASEAN summit, East Asia this summit. Evening. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, that is the East Asia summit and then is the G20. It is a, it's a packed schedule. You spoke about Global South. You spoke about the divide between the East and West, between the North and South uh, and trying to find common ground. Do these countries see India as a voice? You said represent the Global South. Do it, does do these countries who are participating in these uh, fora do they see India as a credible voice within the fora? Uh, the global south countries. Correct. The yes, uh, I mean um, I I would certainly hope so for this reason. Uh, there have been G20 summits before. No other G20 presidency made an effort to get together the developing countries who are not on the table and say please come sit with us tell us what are your concerns 
and we will distill those concerns and place it before the G20. That is a very unique exercise. Nobody has done it before. Mm. So, if we have taken the trouble and we meaning here Prime Minister Modi himself, mm. you know, if 125 countries have been consulted, feel today, yes, what we told India. India has promised us that they will put that issue on the table. I think they have a lot of expectation of India. Uh, and the, as far as the rest of the G20 is concerned, they know that look, we have always in G20, outside the G20, India has a reputation of being a very constructive player, uh, you know, someone who bridges, divides, who kind of somewhere helps to fix uh, problems. So, so the, there's, a, there's a lot of goodwill that we have. And, uh, and again, uh, I, I stress to you, I am confident that every one of the G20 coming to Delhi will understand the responsibility that they bear, will understand today that the other 180 countries of the world are looking to them to set directions uh, and that they cannot afford to fail them. 